Okay, today uh, we're going to talk about cold weather tips for keeping your bladders from uh, not freezing and your bottles, Nettlejean bottles and other things. And just some tips I've learned uh, in my Alpine training with the military. Um, if you learn nothing else from anything I'm putting out here, remember to always blow the water out of your tube. I've noticed in a few hunting videos where guys have uh, had these particular, I call them blue tubers, this platypus, and uh, they, have, they have no tube cover on it and they freeze solid and then they're trying to figure out how to get water out of it. So, like I say, if you learn nothing else from me today, remember that every time you take a zip and your valve is open, make sure that you, after you take a zip, you blow the water back in there. So you'll get a few bubbles in there and that's fine, but just make sure that you always get all the water out of the tube. And the other thing you can do is, you know, this is in your back. So as soon as you pull this up, and you blow the water out of it, take your tube, hold it up, shake it, and you'll see you'll get a few more bubbles that'll go down and it'll go back into your pack, into your reservoir. Uh, it's a good idea to do that, uh, to keep the valve here from freezing and uh, also keep the tube from freezing. Now, the other thing, basically when you do these packs, you notice I've left a lot of air in here. Uh, most people, when you hunt in the summer, you're gonna wanna make sure you turn it upside down like this and you're gonna make sure that you suction the air out of it. So you either squeeze the air out of it like I'm doing here, and then suck it out till you get all the air out and create a vacuum so that your pack doesn't slosh. Because last thing you wanna do with a, with a hydration pack, we learned in the military, you don't want that noise, people can hear you. Same thing with hunting, you don't want a sloshy noise. Even though they put a baffle in most of all of these bladders uh, in the reservoir, it's still gonna make noise. So you wanna get most of that out. However, when you're in cold environment, where the temperatures are freezing, you want to leave a little bit of an air gap in there for expansion so that you don't rip the sides of your bladder out in our cold, uh, cold weather. So again, remember, always make sure once you take a zip, your valve is still open, blow the water till you get one or two bubbles up. Don't keep blowing. You don't want to overextend the air in there. Uh, and then close your valve on this. Make sure these, these just twist, these particular ones. Make sure you twist the valve. That's why I couldn't blow it so well. I had the valve half open. Um, make sure you close the valve on it. Now, I also recommend that um, you definitely get a tube cover for it. Now, these don't come with a tube cover, but you can order a tube cover for like 8 or $9. Highly recommend if you're going to be hunting uh, late seasons, you're going to want this or you're going to be hiking late season. Now, Camelback, the ones we use in the military, this is one of my original military packs. Uh, they make these covers and they're neoprene. They're pretty thick and they're a great, uh, a great cover. Now, they come in several colors. I highly recommend you use the black. What we found testing these in Alaska in the military is that, you know, it's natural. Black uh, attracts more of the heat from the sunlight. You're higher altitudes, you're closer to sun. It's gonna stay warmer than actually a tan or the camouflage color ones that they have. So the black works better. Uh, the other also, the other thing that you wanna remember when you're doing this is I put a, uh, a quick connect piece in here so that I can use my filter to pump water directly into my bladder so I don't have to try to fill it. This is the old style, has a small filling hole. This is the new style, has the larger filling hole. But either way, I add, um, add a quick connect so I can add my filter directly to it. However, cold weather, you're not going to necessarily be using a filter because filters get filled with water and they freeze. Your filter is useless, it breaks. You're really gonna wanna boil your snow or boil your water. Uh, and we'll get into that here in a second, what I use and, and other items that I've used in the past. Again, I, I highly recommend that you get a black cover uh, for it. The um, thing I don't like about the platypus, uh, they don't have a cover for your, your uh, tube. You drink tube lands in the dirt, lands in the blood, whatever. Uh, what I do like about these is that they have a cover, uh, keeps dirt, debris, and everything out of it. I highly recommend, uh, you know, if you're going to run this, you could actually cut this tube and add one of these uh, camelbacks to it if you're so set on using a platypus. But I just, I extremely like these covers that clamp on and uh, that keeps it sealed, dropping dirt, blood, whatever, and um, your valve is, is protected. Okay. Uh, the other thing I recommend you do with these bladders is most packs have a sleeve in the pack. It's usually up against your back. Uh, the theory was that your body heat would help keep this uh, warm and cold weather. However, the insulation that's in the pack, the thick foam and all the clothes you'd be wearing in cold weather, it's really not gonna get much of that. So if you have a sleeve in there, make sure you wrap extra clothing around it. If you have an extra shirt or whatever, and wrap this thing in it, drop it down in the sleeve. Uh, if it attaches by little hooks to the top, 
wrap as much clo extra clothing as you have around it to, to insulate it to keep it from uh, freezing in your pack. Uh, you, we, we operated in you know, 10, 20, uh, 20 below sometimes up there, and it was crazy cold uh, it, where you know, your water would almost instantly freeze, so you had to definitely insulate it. Uh, with these particular bladders, I found that uh, a cheap and inexpensive way to do it, if you don't want to, uh, you know, I like to use stuff that I have rather than pack something else in. For less than two ounces uh, and free, uh, we get the, uh, oh, what's the name of these meals, honey, that we get? Hello Fresh meals. And they pack in this insulation uh, in the box they sent it to us in. It comes like this. And then I like, it's recycled water bottles and it's used to keep the food insulated. And it, it's really light. And what I did was just take, cut a sheet, fold it at the bottom, put packing tape on the side, and it keeps the bladder inside of it and keeps it from freezing also. Uh, that's an option, it's free. It's about two extra ounces for those of you who don't wanna use weight. But it, it's just a free thing. It's uh, something you can do if you're getting those kind of meals or you can probably pick this up from somebody you know that has any kind of insulation packing material like that. Um, talking about the bladders again, like I say, I highly recommend you get a cover uh, in case you forget to blow your water back in, try to make it, you know, a second nature that you just automatically uh, blow your water back in. But uh, in case you forget, getting a, a neoprene cover to cover your hose is really a great idea and it, it'll protect you from that. Uh, other thing you can do that I found, uh, especially with this particular type, uh, because there's no cover or anything on it, and if it gets cold and there's any water residue on it, the valve might stick. So you can stick it down in your coat and zip it up and leave it down in here closer to your armpit, it'll keep that, you know, uh, a warm from your body heat. It won't freeze up and you'll always be able to use, operate your valve on there. Uh, something I recommend. Now, in extreme cold weather, uh, you know, we're talking 20 below, uh, we would always take our packs, we learned, uh, learned on these older packs, open it up and we would take some heating, heating pads. We drop one heating pad down in there and it would hold for the night and keep our water from freezing uh, you know, however we were doing, we we're in our igloos, we made igloos up there, whatever, but uh, it would keep it from freezing solid on us. And again, make sure you blow the water out of the tube or it, it, you, it's, that part's gonna freeze. Um, the, what I used to do as a backup is I used to carry a, a Nalgene bottle. Uh, a lot of people like carrying those. Um, I highly recommend if you're gonna do that, two tips for that, always make sure, well, don't always make sure, but uh, make sure that you get an insulated cover of some kind. I like the neoprene cover here. They're like 10 bucks. Uh, but always make sure that you put this in upside down when you put it on your, in your ruck, on your pack. And the reason you do that is because uh, water is always going to freeze from the top down. So if you have this cap on here and it freezes up here, you're not going to be able to open this to get your water out of it. Because this is going to freeze up around the seals and you won't be able to be able to drink out of it on a standard cap. This is a human cap, which has a separate deal on I'll get into that in a minute, why I, I went with that cap instead of uh, the standard cap here that you screw off. But this will be frozen to it, and it, it takes two men and a monkey to get it off. So I know it sounds crazy. Make sure it's tight. Stick it in your pack upside down. Another thing that I used to do, I don't do this anymore, and I'll show you the new option that I've done, is if you don't wear really tight-fitting clothing and you have a little room in it or you're sitting glassing uh, or you're, you shot an elk and you're tracking them, um, you can take this, wrap it around your neck, stick it down in your, in your clothes, put your coat around it, and your body heat is going to keep this uh, you know, from getting frozen. And every time you take a sip from this, you take it off and you add a little snow to it. So each time, if there's snow on the ground, of course, and, and that's what you're probably gonna be in anyway if it's that cold, uh, put some snow up in there you know, a little bit each time, Put it back um, underneath your coat and it will melt that snow so you replenish all of the, the water that you drank as you were uh, you know, walking after this elk or whatever. So you won't have to stop and try to uh, you know, melt some snow or whatever. You can just put a handful at a time. Each time you drink a little bit, add a little snow to it and do that. Um, I don't carry these anymore. It's, uh, I, carry, I have a chest rig with my handgun and stuff on it. Uh, so this is a little more cumbersome to do. I, I, then I just you know carry it on the side in my pack. What I, what I like to do is carry this now as a backup. And this, I did in my other video, you'll see if you wanna look that up on the, on the uh, Camelback flask. 
uh, basically it's 15, uh, 500 milliliters, 16 ounces, uh, you know, same deal. You can tie a little cord around it, or if you have a pocket in your coat, I have a little inner pockets. You can slide it into your coat pocket. It'll keep from melting. You can add snow each time and then seal it up. And this is a leak proof thing. It has a valve on it too that shuts it. Keep it from leaking. You see right here, you just turn it and uh, it'll lock it. Um, this is a real good, you can hang it if you want, or you, if you have a pocket in your coat, you can see it, put a piece of 550 cord on the little knob on it, hang it. Uh, it's a backup option I have. Uh, what I do, uh, another thing you can do also for the Neogene bottles is you can take an old wool sock as an insulator too, besides keeping it on your side pocket. You can take an old wool sock, pull it over it, slide it down in the side. Um, you can also go with uh, some of these other insulating devices. This is similar to uh, what the military, this is a nail gene insulated bottle carry, keep from freezing. Um, the military, after we had tested them, come up with a sleeve that goes inside this so you don't have to use the hand warmers. And it's basically like this here. And it adds to this, it's already insulated, but it adds to that, seals up these uh, gaps in here, keeps completely sealed so that it won't freeze on you. <clears throat> you can get one of these too if you want, keep it in your side pack, it's another option. Uh, it does work uh, to keep from freezing. Uh, but what I went with, instead of using the plastic nail gene bottle, is I went with the lightweight single wall stainless steel uh, bottle. And the reason why this is only eight ounces and you can actually use this over a fire to melt snow. So you don't want to hike, you want to burn up all your fuel that you have uh, in your, uh, uh, in your pack or whatever. You can take this and you can heat it on a stove. Now, if you use the old natal gene, I've, I just replaced two bottles that I that I'd burned up. The natal gene is a lot heavier. It's a thicker steel, and you can actually put this right down on your on your coals in your fire. Provided you know you take this, you take the lid off. It's got a quick release lid, and you can take it off, and you can hang it. And I'll show you how you can hang it, or you can stick it right down in the fire. This is a lot heavier, uh, and it'll last a lot longer. These will last you know, probably seven, eight years, I just replaced one with this one. You take a fish mouse spreader, okay? And what this does, as you can see, this is used to take hooks out of fish. You take, one of these are like $3 at the hardware, I mean, at the fishing store. You drop it down in your container, and then this will hold your water, and you can hold it over your fire with a stick attached to it. And when I, you use 550 cord, uh, but you know, it's over a fire, so what I like to use is uh, picture hanging wire. You get a small spool, it's good to 50 pounds, it won't burn up. Loop it around there, hang it from a, a, a twig or whatever, and you can melt your snow in this. You know, remember the four to one ratio, whenever you melt snow, for every cup of, of water that you get, you're gonna need four cups of snow. So it takes a lot of snow to make a cup. So four, four to one ratio. Uh, so this filled up would be, have to be filled up four times and melted basically four times, keep adding snow to it to get a full container of it. It takes a little time, but but this is the way you would hang that over the fire rather than put the thin, because this is a real thin wall, this one weighs eight ounces. It weighs the same as an, an Nalgene bottle uh, and it uh, it works great for uh, uh, melting snow in it. And, that, and it's something that you may need to do uh, out there to, uh, to have some water if you're out there and there's no lakes, streams or whatever, because everything's frozen. Uh, you can melt snow in this and you've got it and you can actually you know drop this right down inside of it if you want. Of course, it's a little noisy if you do that and you drop it inside, but I, I just keep it in the side pouch. And at least this is my bottle. I use the same thing when I'm transporting water in it. I put it in upside down so that the threads don't like, it takes the same cap uh, as uh, the other ones. And again, you can insulate it with a wool sock, helps with that. Uh, the reason I like these, this bottle and this particular cap, um, a lot of people, if you're out there and you do happen to come across a stream, it's it's snow on the ground or it's or it's just cold. Maybe there's no snow on the ground, but you want to get water. A lot of guys use steri pens, so they like the nail gene bottle because they can scoop up water, run their steri pen in there. The thing they don't realize is that when you dip this down in the water, your steri pen is going to sterilize the water that's in that it's it's you know uh, run the uh, rays through in here. Um, it's not going to get around the lips, so when you touch it, there's a chance you get giardia. That's where the human gear cap comes in. So it's a humidor cap, I think it's like $8. Uh, it's just as good as these caps. It has an additional valve on and off here, so you can drink from this, so you don't contaminate your lips with the, uh, you know, 
Giardia or anything that could be in the water that you dip the bottle in, if you dip the bottle in. Um, it's just a thought. It's uh, something I tried. It works out pretty good. Uh, it makes it easier too, to get to. And you know, so less spilling with the big wide mouth, but you still have the wide mouth to fill it. Um, an option on these in cold weather, if you come across water and you, you know, you want to fill it without um, dipping, you don't want to dip your whole pack in there. So what you just do is, what I've always done is you take a, um, a bag, a hefty bag, and you cut an end off. And then you scoop this down in the water, pull it up, and you take this over to your pack. And it takes a while, and you pour your water into your pack. Um, that keeps you from contaminating your whole pack, and you're able to do it, uh, you know, in freezing temperatures or whatever, provided it doesn't freeze before you get it in, the, in there. Uh, but if you have flowing water, you do it right next to the water stream or whatever, you can get it in and just use a bag with a thin cup. I've done that before. It works really good. Uh, other thing you can do, uh, cold weather uh, camping, cold weather hunting. Uh, I have a second one of these, which is blue. They make a civilian version. This is the military grade one. I have a blue one that I use uh, for peeing in. You, <laughs> you know, you get in your bag, it's cold as heck outside. You don't want to get out and with all that heat out uh, to, to go to the bathroom. So hopefully you peed before you got in. And even if you do, sometimes you have to. So you pee into, I have a cheaper one of these. It's like $6.00. Pee into it, it's, it's watertight, it's not gonna leak. You don't wanna pee in your bag. Pee into this, you have warm pee, and you stick this in behind your legs or in, in, your, in your sleeping bag with your, you're already in your sleeping bag. So it, it'll add warmth. I know it sounds crazy. The other thing you can do uh, with these is uh, you can put hot water, hot boiling water in it uh, from uh, the campfire. I've done this before. And then you take a, a, a small dry bag and you don't have to use the dry bag, but I always did just because I was always afraid that, you know, I'd roll over in my sleep, catch this, and it would come loose. So in that case, I just take the small dry bag and I take the hot boiling water and I slide this down in there. And it also protects, protects me from burns a little bit by putting it into the dry bag if it leaks. You still got this, it's warm, it's in your sleeping bag, and in the morning, and you've got a full bottle of water that you put in that was you know steaming hot that night um it's just a it's a good way to keep your bag warm a good way to keep you warm um again you can go with the single wall which i do it's real light eight ounces you can go with the heavier duty single wall which you can dip right in the fire or you can go with the brian call he talked me into this i you on his site it's a dual walled aluminum it weighs uh 13 ounces so you could knock somebody out with this i mean it's pretty heavy but me and my wife can put hot chocolate or coffee in this, and it's uh, 33 ounces, seals up. It's got a nice drinking lid on it, and it will supposedly keep it uh, eight or 12 hours. I can't remember which. Uh, one is cold, one's hot. I think, I think it keeps stuff hot for uh, 12 hours. I'm, I, I'm gonna say eight hours, but um, I'm gonna try that out this year. See, I haven't tried it yet. See how it works. Uh, just another thing that I thought I'd recommend. Uh, again. Make sure you blow the water out of your bladder when you put uh, when you do that. If it gets real cold, you might want to think about putting uh, anything inside your, your bladder there. Make sure you insulate your uh, bladder reservoir with any clothes you have in your ruck around it. Uh, make sure you go completely around it as best you can. Seal it up to not let any cold get to it. Um, let me see if I missed anything. Uh, okay. Pretty much, uh, I think that covers it. Uh, the thing I noticed, though, is people are freezing up their tubes. If you're going to carry this... You, at a minimum, you got to blow the water back into the reservoir. Don't keep water in your tube. It's going to freeze. I recommend you spend 8 bucks, get you a neoprene tube cover. Um, I recommend a stainless steel bottle. Uh, that's an absolute plus to have with you. Uh, you can heat snow in the fire in a situation where you, survival situation, you're out there, you, whatever happens, you need to boil water or, I mean, melt snow uh, or boil water. You can do it with this and this and, you know, you have a fire made from, you know, firewood. There you go. Um, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I think that's about it. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, I hope that helps you. Um, I saw people struggling, you know, freezing stuff up like this. And I, and I know for sure that you can operate a bladder in, a, in, in you know, 20, 20 below. Uh, as long as you, you properly maintain it and know what you're doing. Uh, make sure that you insulate it. If you, whenever you can, add hot water to it the, that night. 
uh, even if it's half empty. Open it up, get some hot water on your mini stove, add the hot water to it, seal it back up, keep it in your tent, and uh, you, you should be good to go. Um, oh, another tip that some people used to, we used to try, uh, they'll take the water bottle and they think that snow is an insulator, which it is, and they'll bury it under snow and they think it's not gonna freeze. Well, that's true to an uh, extent, but truly what you need to do is have hot water in it before you bury it in the snow. And what that does is just like an igloo, it crystallizes uh, around it. So you bury it in the snow, bury it with snow. Uh, the heat uh, crystallizes around it, builds a wall around it, and the snow acts as an insulator and will keep it, uh, I think we did 17 hours we tested and it didn't freeze uh, the bottles we were using at the time. They, they weren't Nalgene, they were something else. Uh, and we buried it in the snow, uh, about under a foot of snow. Uh, but we, we started warm. When you just do it with cold water, uh, it will freezing up on us. So just an, another tip, snow is an insulator, but you gotta start with warm or hot water to, to make that work. Okay, uh, hope I didn't miss anything. I hope that helps you. And uh, thanks for watching.